Dobry den, yak simayish. I'm Pavlina, host of Nash Holos Ukrainian Roots Radio. Join me Wednesdays at 11 a.m. for a bilingual hour of Ukrainian music, folklore, and factoids for the culturally curious. And at 12 noon, join Oksana for Nash Holos Ukrainian Hour here on CHLY 101.7 FM. The popular Ukrainian folk rock group Otvinta with a reflection on our times, a more contemporary take on a traditional Ukrainian folk song Pusiela Baba Konopel, which translates as Granny Planted Hemp. Nowadays, Baba, although not this one, is just as likely to smoke it as plant it. Uh, then again, who knows what went on back in the day. Otvinta with Nakurela Baba Zhuravlya. Вітаю вас всіх, дорогі радіосухачі, на радіопрограму «Наш голос» радіо Кринського Куріння, яка подається вам у місті Ванкувері щосуботи о шостій годині вечора на радіостанції AM1320 CHMB у місті Нанаймо кожної середи з 11 до 13 години на хвилі CHLY 101 CMFM і по всьому світі по мережі PCJ Радіо Міжнародному. З вами Павлина Макуарі. Дякую, що рішила перебути зі мною наступну годину. Hello there and welcome to Nash Holos Ukrainian Roots Radio, coming to you Saturdays at 6 p.m. on AM 1320 CHMB Vancouver, Wednesdays from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. on CHLY 101.7 FM in Nanaimo, and around the world on AM, FM, shortwave and satellite radio via PCJ Radio International. I'm your host, Paula Timchuk mccory Pukrinska Pavlina, and I'm delighted to have you with me. We've got a great program lined up for you. We've dug into the uh, Nash Holos Audio Fault again, and uh, we found that lovely folk tale series, so we're going to be hearing the story again of the stolen postola. We've also got a book review, our usual proverb of the week, and other items of interest, as well as plenty of great Ukrainian music. And coming up next is something a little more traditional than we started out with, uh, Karinya from the United States, a great young group that does a real traditional sound. Here they are with a folk song about that girl, Marichka. Oi, Marichka, Chicharri. Chichari, chichari, rosha she me kuchari, 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 rosha she me kuchari, kuchari, kuchari. Я би тобі чесала, 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 я 
Кимака не знала, не знала, не знала. Кимака не знала, не знала, не знала. Мамка буде диви, 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 ти. Я вся буду ганьби, ти ганьби, ти ганьби, ти. Я вся буду ганьби, ти ганьби. Hey, hey, rose, the silly boy. Yeah, oh. 
And that was Nizhures from Ukraine with a traditional Ukrainian patriotic song, Oi Uluzi Chervona Kalena, In the Forest There is a Cranberry Tree. And uh, that was very popular back in the World War II era in Ukraine. Nizhures with Oi Uluzi Chervona Kalena. Coming up next is a more contemporary song. This is a song originally composed by Mandre, and it was um, very popular during the Maidan Revolution and the Orange Revolution before that. Here they are. Actually, it's not Mandre. It's Lesya Bahri and Nazari Karabinovich with Nispe Moyaridna Zemlya, Do Not Sleep, My Native Land. Скажу, де квітне дивний сад, де срібля станіч тремтить у темних водах, у далекий край лежить нелегкий шлях, доки хижа ніч кружля по колу. Не спи, моя рідна земля, прокинься, моя Україно, відкрий свої очі у світлі далеких зірок. Це дивляться з темних небес загиблі поети й герої, всі ті, що поклали життя за майбутнє твоє. Vyslouchejte radio programu Náš holos, radio Krínského Koríňa na radiostanci CHLY 101 FM u místí Nenajmo. Při mikrofoní cího denu je Pavlína. You're listening to Náš holos Ukrainian Roots Radio on CHLY 101.7 FM in Nenajmo. I'm your host this hour, Pavlína. Welcome to Knižka Corner, book reviews by Myra Junik, Ukrainian stories in English. In this edition of Knishka Corner, we will be discussing Serhii Plokhi's non-fiction thriller The Man with the Poison Gun, a Cold War spy story. The Man with the Poison Gun, Serhii Plokhi's first non-fiction thriller, focuses on the life of Bogdan Stashinsky, the assassin who killed Stepan Bandera and Lev Rabbit. The very first paragraph sets up a shocking comparison between fiction and real life. In the fall of 1961, while David Cornwell, a British spy, more commonly known as Jean Le Carré, was contemplating the writing of his first best-selling novel, The Spy Who Came In From the Cold, the West German police were actually interrogating a Soviet spy. That spy was Bogdan Stashinsky. 
His story begins in 1949, in post-war Ukraine, when Nikita Khrushchev, then the party boss of Ukraine, decided that he needed to destroy the Ukrainian resistance by killing the leader of the Organization of Ukrainian Nationalists, Oun Stepan Bandera. Bandera had spent years in Polish prisons and the German concentration camp of Schassenhausen. His followers were now headquartered in Munich, the center of the American occupation zone in Germany. In early 1950, Bogdan Staszynski was arrested by the Soviets for a minor offense and given an ultimatum. Cooperate with the Soviets and become a traitor to Ukraine or face prison time and possible death along with his entire family. Bogdan chose to become an agent of the Soviets. Staszynski returned from Lviv to his native village and told his relatives that the secret police were hot on his heels. Everyone agreed that under the circumstances he had no choice but to flee to the forest and join the guerrillas. His initial task involved betraying members of the Ukrainian underground, which led to arrests and assassinations. When Staszynski's family found out the truth about what he had done, Staszynski had nowhere to go. He had saved his family by betraying it. They did not want to have him around anymore. The secret police would become his new home and family. As an agent of the Soviet secret police, Bogdan would be trained in spycraft and assassination techniques. His weapon was a poison gun, which would immediately kill his target with undetectable poisonous fumes. His initial target in Munich was Lev Rebet, a troublesome Ukrainian journalist. The KGB described Rebet as an intellectual leader of the Ukrainian nationalists who wrote articles inciting Ukrainians to fight against the Soviet occupiers. Staszynski killed Rebet on October 12, 1957. After his initial success, he was given a more important target, the leader of Oun, Stepan Bandera. Bandera's assassination was more complex because of his bodyguard, and it involved following the Ukrainian leader for weeks on end. However, Staszynski eventually saw his opportunity when Bandera was alone after a shopping trip and murdered him on October the 15th, 1959, in the stairwell of his home. At first, authorities were mystified by Bandera's death, calling it a stroke or a possible suicide. The poison that killed Bandera left no trace, so it was not until Staszynski defected to West Germany that he revealed how Bandera died. In order to stay in the West, Staszynski had to convince German authorities that the KGB wanted to kill him because of what he knew about the Soviet assassination plots. He was eventually tried for the murders of Rebet and Bandera, and his trial opened up the truth to the world for the very first time. The Man with the Poison Gun is a very interesting book about post-war Soviet and European politics. Khrushchev's role in the deaths of Rebet and Bandera was shocking to the world community at the time. Today, the attempted assassination of Ukraine's President Viktor Yushchenko and the successful assassinations of journalist Alexander Litvinenko in London, Sergei Magnitsky in a Russian prison, and Boris Nemtsov on a bridge in Moscow are brutal reminders that the strategies of the post-war KGB are still alive and well in Russia. Plotky was able to write his book because of the information he gathered from Staszynski's trial testimony, as well as recently released historical documents such as KGB and CIA archives. His extensive notes will be very useful to anyone wanting to know more about post-war Ukrainian resistance. Plotky is a historian, 
not a writer of spy thrillers like John le Carré or Ian Fleming, and he has difficulty describing Stashinsky's moral qualms about killing his victims. He tells readers that in his early days as a Soviet agent, Bogdan was confused since he had been raised as a Christian. The idea of killing another human being was difficult for him to contemplate. However, Bogdan did proceed to kill both Rabbit and Bandera, regardless of his confusion. Despite these issues, Plotky's book is an interesting and revealing expose of Stashinsky's life as a Soviet agent and his role in the murders of Rabbit and Bandera. Readers will be surprised to learn that Ian Fleming actually modeled part of his novel, The Man with the Golden Gun, on the actions of Bogdan Stashinsky. Although The Man with the Poison Gun is Serhii Plotky's first nonfiction thriller, he has written extensively on the history of Ukraine and Eastern Europe. His most recent works include The Gates of Europe, A History of Ukraine, The Last Empire, The Final Days of the Soviet Union, and The Cossack Myth, History and Nationhood in the Age of Empires. Plucky was born in Russia to Ukrainian parents, but grew up and went to school in Ukraine. He received his Ph.D. in history from Kiev University. He was a professor of history and associate director of the Peter Yatsik Center for Ukrainian Historical Research at the University of Alberta. He is currently the Mikhail Khrushchevsky Professor of Ukrainian History at Harvard University. The Man with the Poison Gun is available at Chapters Indigo and Amazon. Thanks, Myra. Join us again soon for another edition of Kanishka Corner, book reviews by Myra Junik, here on Nasholos Ukrainian Roots Radio. Let us all the victory God be with you, let us
and the inimitable Ron Kahoot with Buria and his original composition that has been recorded by many other groups since. And uh, just, it's a great tune. Fly, Kozak, fly. And coming up next, also from Toronto, a group called Zirka. And this is a group, it's been around for a while, not as long, not as, long as uh, Ron Kahoot's Buria, but um, they've been around a while and they're still going strong, doing um, lots of performances and private events. Here they are, they are called Zirka and traditional Ukrainian folk song, Tejmena Pid Manula, You Deceived Me. Салу понеділу під образом поверні ноги, а прийшов к тебе нема, а від манула підвела. Тишка сала у вівторок поцілюєш раз із сорок, я прийшов к тебе нема, під манула підвела. Ти ж мене від манула, ти ж мене підвела, ти ж мене молода з морозом звела. in Central Vancouver Island's Ukrainian community. The Visna Ukrainian dancers of Nanaimo invite one and all to their borscht and sausage fundraiser this Friday, October 26th at St. Michael's Ukrainian Catholic Parish Hall. There will be a silent auction, 50-50 tickets and other fun stuff, and of course delicious Ukrainian food. Enjoy a bowl of homemade borscht, the Ukrainian signature soup, as well as a yummy sausage on a bun. Tickets are just $10. You can get them at the door, or better still, purchase them in advance before they sell out. To get yours, just email visnadancers at gmail.com or find them on their Facebook page, Visna Dancers Nanaimo. That's the Visna Ukrainian Dancers Borscht and Sausage Fundraiser this Friday, October 26th, from 6 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. at St. Michael's Ukrainian Catholic Parish Hall, 4017 Victoria Avenue, just off Norwell Drive in Nanaimo. 
St. Mary's Ukrainian Orthodox Parish will be having their October pierogi supper this Friday from 5 to 7 p.m. Eat in or take out. St. Mary's is located at 594 Carlsway in Parksville. For information, call them at 250-933-5619. Also, St. Mary's has finalized their new church service schedule. Starting in November, Divine Liturgy services will be held at 10 a.m. on the first and third Saturdays of the month, with Father Roman Saplan officiating. Again, St. Mary's Ukrainian Orthodox Parish is located at 594 Carlsway in Parksville. For information, call them at 250-933-5619. St. Michael's Ukrainian Catholic Parish in Nanaimo holds their Divine Liturgy at 11 a.m. on Saturdays with Father Yuri Vishnevsky officiating. The service is bilingual. St. Michael's Ukrainian Catholic Parish is located at 4017 Victoria Avenue in Nanaimo, just off Norwell Drive. On Saturdays at 6 p.m., tune in to the Vancouver edition of Nosh Holos on AM 1320 or streaming online at am1320.com. As well, the international edition airs on AM, FM, shortwave, and satellite radio in over 20 countries on the PCJ Radio Network. You can get the podcast links at the Nosh Holos website. And here in Nanaimo, Nosh Holos Ukrainian Roots Radio broadcasts live every Wednesday to the north and central Vancouver Island, Gulf Island, Sunshine Coast, northwest Washington State, and greater Vancouver listening areas. So at 11 a.m. every Wednesday, please join me, Pavlina, and at 12 noon, Oksana, for two hours of the best in Ukrainian news, folklore, and music here on CHLY, Radio Malaspina, 101.7 FM on the radio dial, and streaming online at chly.ca. In between broadcasts, make sure to follow Nash Holos and Oksana and me on Facebook and Twitter. And for audio archives, transcripts, podcast feeds, and more, visit our website at www.nashholos.com. And you are listening to Nash Holos Ukrainian Roots Radio on CHLY 101.7 FM in beautiful downtown Nanaimo. I'm your host for this hour, Pavlina. This is Radio Pratamo Nash Holos, Radio Krinsko Hokurinya, na Radio Stansi CHLY, Stoidenisim FM, Umistin Nanaimo. Hovorit Pavlina. Welcome to Beyond the Blue Mirror, a series of programs that celebrates the rich Ukrainian oral tradition. Each program features a folk tale or legend, as well as a related real-life story, enhanced with traditional and contemporary music. My name is Linda Mikolayenko. Thank you for joining me. The Stolen Postole Bondachuk was up to no good. This rich farmer was always plotting ways to get the poor peasants to work on his land for next to nothing. And now, now he had his eyes set on Danello, a big, strong man. But how to enlist him? He stewed, and he schemed, and he twirled the ends of his long black moustache until, until he came up with a plan. And then he sent one of his servants to steal something from Danello. In the dark of night, the servant crept into Danello's hut. Careful not to wake the sleeping man, he tiptoed about, looking for something worth stealing. But Danello was so poor... He couldn't find anything. All night long he looked, and finally, just before dawn, he realized that Danilo had no real valuables, and so he quickly grabbed a pair of postolets, a pair of shoes, and ran out the door. In the morning, 
Danilo awoke. He yawned and stretched and rubbed his eyes, but when he reached for his postulet, well, they were gone. He scratched his head and tried to remember where he had left them, but he was certain that he had put them beside his bed as he always had. Outside, the frost lay thick on the ground. Winter was on its way, and he wondered how he would survive without a pair of shoes. As he sat there, suddenly the door to his hut burst open, and in walked Bundachuk, the wealthy farmer who lived nearby. "'Why so glum, Danilo?' he said. "'Why shouldn't I be sad?' replied Danilo. "'Some scoundrel has stolen my postolier. "'Winter is on its way, and I don't have a cent to buy a new pair.' "'Oh, that is indeed terrible.' Bondarchuk pretended to feel sorry for him. But uh, don't worry. I'll uh, buy you a pair of shoes, and uh, you can pay me back by working on my farm for a year. Well, Danilo thought this was ludicrous. But what could he do? He had no choice. So he went to work for Bondarchuk. Day in and day out he slaved, but Danilo was a big man, and the landlord fed him so little that he was always hungry. Finally, one day, when he felt he just didn't have the strength to continue, he went to Bondachuk and he complained, How can I work when all day long my stomach aches and rumbles so? Again, Bondachuk pretended to feel sorry for him. I'll tell you what, my friend. I'll get my wife to give you a boiled egg every morning. And that way you'll have the strength to continue to work, and by the end of the year you'll have paid off your debt. All right? Danilo agreed and went back to work. For an entire year, Danilo worked like a dog. He plowed and he planted and he threshed just to pay for a pair of shoes. And though he was still hungry, that boiled egg did help to give him the strength he needed to continue working. Now, by Danilo's sweat, the farmer prospered with bountiful crops and a rich harvest. And when the year was almost up, he really wanted to keep Danilo working for him. And so one day he called him to his house. So you finally paid for the shoes, said Bondacha, stroking his long black mustache. That's right, said Danilo. And did you get a boiled egg to eat every morning, said Bondacha, as he furrowed his bushy eyebrows. Yes, replied Danilo. Oh! Bondacha gasped and rolled his eyes as if he was in great pain. Do you realize what you have done? What do you mean? asked Danilo. What have I done? Why, you have devoured three hundred eggs. If my wife would have put those eggs under brood hens, they would have hatched into three hundred chicks. Those three hundred chicks would have grown into three hundred hens that would have laid a thousand more eggs. Those thousand eggs would have hatched into a thousand chicks. I could have sold those thousand chicks at the market for quite a sack of money. So you see, you, Donello, you have cost me a sack of money. Why, if I take you to court, the judge will make you work for me for at least another year. Donello listened to that tirade, and when it was over, he said, Have it your way, you cheat. But I'll not work for you, not for another minute. And with that, he stamped his foot, turned around, and walked out the door. But when he had cooled down, he fell into despair. Oi, Boje, Shosim no Yubude, what is to become of me? How could he possibly win in court against a rich man? As he wandered the roads aimlessly, he came upon an old Hutso a mountain-dweller. 
"'What troubles you, my friend?' said the old man. Now this Hutzel was not only old, he was wise, and in his pocket he carried a blue mirror, and in it he could see where the rabbits slept, and how the stars fell into the sea, and what made the sun smile. He understood the languages of trees, and why the moon spread her skirts of melancholy over the hills. Danilo told him the whole story. And he finished off by saying, So you see, Bondachuk has me for good. I worked for him for an entire year, and now he's taking me to court. A rich man's greed knows no bounds, said the Hutzel. So you mean there's no hope, replied Donello. Might makes right, and beggars can't be choosers. The judge is a learned man, but in my mirror he would see nothing. And with that he pulled out his mirror, and he gazed up into the sky and down to the ground and around to the forests and the mountains. And then he smiled and motioned for Danilo to come closer, and he whispered something in Danilo's ear. Danilo nodded and smiled and went on his way. The day of the trial arrived. Bundarchuk walked into the courtroom, strutting like a peacock, wearing a fine velvet suit. The judge and the clerk took their places, and they waited for Danilo. They waited. Minutes turned into hours. Bundarchuk began tugging at his mustache. Where is that fool? The judge looked at his watch, and the clerk tapped his fingers nervously on the desk. Finally, when they were just about to give up, the door to the courtroom burst open, and in walked Donello, heaving and panting. <sighs> Excuse me, Your Honor, he said, but I have been very busy. What do you mean, said the judge, what do you mean, busy? Well, I was busy boiling potatoes and planting them, boiling barley and planting it, boiling oats and planting them. Wait a minute, said the judge, you can't get a crop from boiled potatoes or boiled barley. Well, surely I can, replied Donello, just as surely as Bondachuk says he could get a thousand chicks from the boiled eggs that his wife fed me. The judge looked at Bondachuk. What kind of eggs did your wife give Donello? B -b boiled eggs, stuttered Bondachuk. The judge looked at the clerk, and then at Donello, and then at Bondachuk, and he began to laugh. And then the clerk began to laugh, and Donello began to laugh, but Bondachuk did not laugh. He stood there looking bewildered, tugging at his mustache, and then he grabbed his coat and hat, and he walked out of the court. And as his carriage clattered away, he could still hear them laughing. But that was the last time the rich man tried to take a peasant to court. Cultural themes are quite common in Ukrainian folk tales. Many of the Ukrainians who came to Canada in the early 1900s were farmers, and they came at the invitation of the then Minister of the Interior, Clifford Sifton, who praised these stalwart peasants in sheepskin coats. 
However, that reference to men in sheepskin coats soon became a derogatory term, as the newcomers were looked on with suspicion by the established population. And it didn't take long before the immigrants began to encounter men like the Bundachuk in the story of the stolen postale. My father came to Canada in 1930 and worked for farmers during the difficult years of drought and depression. One year my father tried to earn a little bit of extra money by catching the gophers that would cause great devastation to the crops. He was disappointed, though, that the farmer he worked for wanted to deny him even that. It was a story he often told me, so one day I decided to write it down, and it came out in the form of a poem. Here it is. "'Sure can do a lot of damage to the crops, those gophers,' said Mr. Nicholson, sipping tea. "'Farmer with a reputation. Had twenty thousand in the bank. Nineteen thirty-four is going to be a bad year for them, they say. Municipalities paying one cent apiece. Mike nodded. Immigrant hired seven months for one hundred dollars. Up at five, Mike fed horses, milked cows, set out poison in the fields, plowed, planted, fed pigs. Sun set late on spring days, gathered up dead gophers, cut tails and hind feet for proof, put them in a box. Up at five, Mike fed horses, milked cows, set out poison in the fields, plowed, planted, fed pigs, gathered up dead gophers, cut tails and hind feet, added them to the box. No chance to cash them in. Mr. Nicholson, you going to town? How about you take my gophers? Sure, Mike. Returning in his wagon, Mr. Nicholson holds out two dollars and thirty-seven cents. Mike, you got those gophers from my farm. You work for me. My daughter wants a coat. How about I keep one dollar? Sure, Mr. Nicholson, sure. If he had a daughter, he'd rather she wear sheepskin than rodent. Beyond the Blue Mirror is a series of programs that celebrates the rich Ukrainian oral tradition. I would like to acknowledge the support of the Canada Council for the Arts. Je remercie de son soutien le Conseil des Arts du Canada. I would also like to thank Ethnic FM CKER Radio for the Roger Charest Senior Award for Broadcast and Media Arts administered through the Ukrainian Resource and Development Center at Grant McEwen College in Edmonton. The folktale in this program is based on The Stolen Postelet and the Boiled Eggs from the book 
The Magic Egg and Other Tales from Ukraine, retold by Barbara J. Suen and edited by Natalie O. Kononenko. Copyright 1997 by Libraries Unlimited Incorporated. Used with the permission of Greenwood Publishing Group, Westport, Connecticut. The poem, Spring Harvest, is based on the recollections of my father, Mike Mikolayanko. My gratitude to him for allowing me to share it with you. Introductory music for this series is taken from Dance 5, from the CD Prairie Nights and Peacock Feathers, performed by Paris to Cave, distributed by Alesha Records. This program also features excerpts from Hutzel Fantasy from the CD A Blaze, performed by Vasil Popoduk, and the original composition Krajina Kaske from the CD Reflections of Our Pioneers, performed by Duet Marena. I'm Linda Mikolayenko. You may reach me through my website, lindathestoryteller.ca. Thank you for listening. Winnipeg, Manitoba, that was Sluhai with, of course, Sinasha Zemya, This Land is Our Land. Tsiho denu polo zvame Pavlina, nahadu ju vysluhite radio programu nash holos radio nasho ho korinja. Zalešajte si zname na stupnu hodenu, dali peradiju mikrofonu oksani. Zaprošju posluhite troche pro istoriju i tradicije rozpovist oksana. Ale peri tem jo hoću zalešite vas tekeme slovame mudrostea. Bida ne chodit polisi, ale pomiš ljudme. And our proverb of the week translates as misfortune wanders not in the forest, but among people. And that brings us to the end of the first hour of Nash Holos Ukrainian Roots Radio here on CHLY 101.7 FM in Nanaimo. Please stay with us as Oksana takes over the microphone to host the next hour.
Meanwhile, please join me here again next Wednesday from 11 a.m. till 12 noon. And until then, do stay in touch with both Oksana and me via our Facebook page and Twitter. If you're able to catch the live transmission of the show, make sure to use the fantastic new media player at www.chly.ca. If you miss the live transmission of any show, you can always catch the podcast. There's a media player as well as a link to the Nash Holos podcast feed at our website, www.nashholos.com. We're also on Mixcloud along with the other fine programs here on CHLY 101.7 FM in Nanaimo. So stay tuned next for the Nash Holos Ukrainian Hour with Oksana, followed by Wellness Wednesday to learn how to be healthy naturally. And at 2 p.m., join Gord Bibby for two hours of great oldies on Groovin' with Bibby G. I'm Pavlina. Thanks so much for listening. Do zusichi. Mm-hmm.